Hello and welcome to Animal Bites. I'm Bob. So today I'm looking for an animal which is loathed by plenty and misunderstood by the rest. But when you start looking into them, they are really interesting. So today I'm going to be looking into earthworms. Earthworms are found in the phylum Annelida, a group of segmented worms which includes earthworms, ragworms and also leeches. Within the phylum Annelida, there's a subclass called Oligochaete. This group made up of the small aquatic worms, ice worms, and the earthworm. The subclass Oligochaete is made up of over 6,000 species, with over half of them being earthworms. Despite there being so many species of earthworm globally, here in Britain we only have about 28 species. Compared to the 180 species of earthworm found in France, Britain's numbers of worm diversity is extremely low. The low diversity of British worms can be explained by Britain splitting from mainland Europe during the Pleistocene. This, plus the slow dispersal rate of worms, mean there just hasn't been time in Britain for worms to split off and diversify into different species. Charles Darwin noted back in 1881 how worms can improve the aeration of the soil, the drainage, and by casting on the surface can build up the soil level. Thanks to modern science, we're now even better able to understand how earthworms play a role in the nutrient cycle. As worms move through the soil, they ingest all the organic material, such as dead leaves or old plant roots, and they extract the nutrients they need to survive. What's left over, they release as a cast, which is extremely high in nitrogen, which is a nutrient which is really important to plant growth. Here in Britain, we have species of earthworm that go from 15mm all the way up to 30 centimetres long, which sounds pretty long, but it's nothing compared to the giant Gippsland earthworm Australia, which can reach up to 3 metres in length. Despite this variation in body size, there are some features across all earthworms which are the same. For example, all earthworms are segmented. This also runs into the inside of the animal, where the inside is separated by small internal walls called septa. The inside of an earthworm is relatively simple compared to other animals, with all the organs suspended in the internal fluid, called the colomic fluid. This fluid can be secreted out onto the worm's body through pores in the side of each segment. By secreting this fluid out, it allows the worm to breathe. As they don't have lungs, the oxygen diffuses straight through the skin, but they must stay moist to do this. It's because of this need to avoid drying out and to breathe that earthworms come to the surface when it rains heavily. They travel across the surface to reach new areas. But if a worm is caught out in the sun and dries out, it will quickly suffocate. Another feature found on most earthworms is the presence of the setae. These are tiny hairs on some of the segments of the animal. These hairs are like anchors and are used by the worm to help pull and push itself across the surface or through the soil. Something that can be observed on the bodies of earthworms is something called the saddle. This part of the body is important for the mating of worms. The saddle contains large gland cells. These produce mucus which is used to nourish unhatched worms. As the saddle only develops when a worm is ready to mate, it is not present on juvenile worms and can be used to quickly identify if you are looking at an adult or a juvenile. Earthworms are both male and female at the same time. So when they mate, both will have their eggs fertilised by the other. When earthworms mate, they line themselves up so that both the female and male genital openings line up against each other. Then they start to secrete a large amount of mucus known as a slime tube. Once the sperm and eggs have been deposited, both worms start to back up out of the slime tube passing over their heads. As the worm fully backs up out of the slime tube, it closes up behind them, containing both the sperm and the eggs. Here, the eggs are fertilised. This now sealed slime tube full of fertilised eggs is known as the cocoon. For most species of earthworm, this cocoon can hatch in about two to three weeks. However, if conditions aren't suitable, such as a drought and not enough rain, the cocoon can last for years before hatching. Once the cocoon does hatch and the worms are released, there is no larval stage. The worms come out just as small versions of the adults. 
They'll begin to feed, grow, until they themselves develop a saddle and are ready to mate. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned a lot. If you'd like to learn more about earthworms, I'll put some links in the description below so you can go off and learn all about worms in your area. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope to see you again next time on Animal Bites.